Welcome back to the channel. And if you're a new visitor to the channel, then please consider subscribing and joining the growing community by hitting that subscribe icon and the notification icon to be alerted when new content gets released. This week, we're going to run through the basics of actionable notifications combined with events. By the end of this video, you'll be able to push notifications out to your mobile phone as to if you have forgotten to turn on your home assistant alarm and take the appropriate action. If you want to know how to create an alarm with home assistant, then follow the link in the pop-up above. Next, when you return home, it will send you a message and ask you if you want to turn off your alarm and take the appropriate action. Now, I know that some of you are going to be saying, surely you want to turn on your alarm when you leave and disarm your alarm when you arrive home. And that's true. So we'll include an additional automation at the end of the video to disable the alarm automatically when you arrive home. And it will send you a confirmation message afterwards. So let's get our hands dirty. For this automation to run out of the box, you'll need to have set up an alarm within Home Assistant. But I built this guide to teach you about the principles of what you can implement, not about the specific user cases that you might have. Such user cases could be reminding you you've left the garage door open and asking you what you want to do. And then based on your response, closing that garage door. The possibilities are endless. If you'd like one of these user cases detailed out, then please let me know in the comments below. So at the time of recording, we're running on Home Assistant 2023.9 dot one so first off let's move across into the automation section settings automations now i'll put a search on this of actionable notifications so that we don't get confused all the other automations that i have listed the first automation will trigger when we are outside of the home zone check the alarm status is disarmed and then send us an actionable notification asking us if we'd like to arm home or arm away or view the camera feeds if or just ignore it. The second automation will trigger based on the events that we send back to Home Assistant in the first automation. I'm specifically splitting these actionable notifications into two automations to demonstrate how events work. Links in the description below as into what Home Assistant defines as an event. To make this simple, think of an event as a stored trigger value and is the core feature of Home Assistant. In this case, we'll be sending a message to your mobile phone and it will look for a response. That response will be linked to an event and then we can use that to trigger a second automation. A third automation will be a standalone actionable notification that sends a message to your mobile. Based on your response, it will either disarm the alarm or you can send a message back that will just ignore the message. The bonus fourth automation is just a simple automation that when you are in the home zone, disarms the alarm and sends you a notification to say that it's done that. For any of these automations to work, you'll need to have installed the Home Assistant Companion app on your mobile. Links in the description on how to do that. So let's run through our first automation. The setting of the events based on leaving the home zone. Firstly, we'll need to set up a home zone. I won't go through that in this video, as you should have done that when you set up your Home Assistant. But I put links in the description below on an article on how to actually do that. So let's go forward and create an automation. Create a new automation. We need to have set triggers. The trigger will be based on a zone. For this trigger, we're going to check to see if Paul leaves the home zone. Select your person in the entity location. Select the zone that you wish to be monitoring. And we're going to trigger the event on a leaving. Next, we'll add conditions. For our condition, we're going to be basing it on whether the alarm is set. So we're going to pick state. We're going to pick up on the alarm entity. My alarm that I installed is called Alarmo. Links in the description. Select the main panel and check the state that you're checking against. For us, we're going to be checking to make sure it's disarmed. Next, we're going to move down into the actions. For the actions, we're going to send a notification to Paul. We're going to call the service and send a notification. Put in the title of Home Alarm. Next, we put in our message. Do you want to arm the alarm? Next, we need to give the information that we're going to display in our actionable notification. For this, we're going to type in some data element. If you click data, go across into the section where the parameters can be set. Type in actions, colon. 
Return, tab across once, then put a dash sign. We're now going to specify what the first of our actions is going to be. Type in action, colon, space, URI. URI, not URL. The URI field will tell Home Assistant to display a Home Assistant page. Next, we're going to go to a title. Make sure the title starts underneath the action from the previous line. Our title is going to be view cameras. Enter. Then we give it our URI value. In this case, the URI needs to be a page within Home Assistant. For the purposes of this, I've actually created one. I've got a dashboard that's already been set up. We want the URL information that comes immediately after the port 8123. That port might be different on your system, depending on how you've set it up. Copy from immediately after the port. Paste this information directly after the URI attribute. Next, we'll give it an icon. Go down to page, type icon. In this case, we're using SF symbols. These are icons that are available on an iPhone. Unfortunately, this functionality is not yet available on Android. Hopefully it will come in a later release. There are links in the description below on where you can get these symbols from. Press enter and put in another action, making sure you line them up correctly. Next, we need to give it the tag of the event. In this case, we're going to say arm away alarm. Make sure that's in capital, arm home alarm. This is the title that will be displayed on your phone when it's displaying the actionable notification. Again, I'll give it another icon. I've given it the icon for the alarm fill. Press enter, line up your tabs, and type in the next action. In my case, this will be arm underscore home underscore alarm, making sure it's in capital letters. Now let's give it a title that will be displayed on your phone, making sure that you line them up. My title is arm home alarm. This is what will be displayed on your iPhone as the next option to be able to be selected. Now let's give it an icon. The icon I've selected is a shield that's filled. Now let's put in the final selection. Return, line up, put in your dash, type action, and in this case, our final one will be ignore. Press enter, line up. Now let's give it a title. And finally, an icon. In this selection, we'll make this slightly different. We're gonna make this destructive. If we set a flag for destructive and turn it to true, what will happen is that this will be displayed as red and it will mean that once this is pressed, the message will disappear. Now let's save that and let's try it out. To be able to test this, we have to go to the three dots at the start. If we press this and run, as you can see from the insert, our message has appeared. But at this point in time, there are no actions. So although we've set the event, we haven't actually been able to do anything with that information. So let's assume our first automation has triggered and we have selected an action and this automation will take those events and take appropriate action. So let's create that automation. Create automation, create new automation. First insert a trigger. The trigger will be based on a manual event. Copy this exactly as it is on screen. Next, we need to determine what event was actually recorded. For that, we're going to type in an action into the event data. The action that we're going to be picking up on is arm away alarm, which is exactly what we typed into our first automation. We can make it user specific, but since we could send this message to anybody, we'll leave this one generic. Since we have two potential event statuses, we can just duplicate this first one. We can go back down into the action and our action will this time be looking for the arm home alarm action. To be able to trigger different event actions, we need to give these trigger IDs. Scroll back up, three dots in the top right hand corner, edit ID. Type in an appropriate action. In my case, I'm just gonna use the arm away alarm underscore triggered. Likewise, for the one below, go to the three dots, edit ID, arm home alarm underscore triggered. We can now move down into our action. We're going to select an action of choose based on the two different triggered events we have at the top. Select conditions for option one, add a condition. We're going to say triggered by, and we're going to select the arm away alarm trigger. Next, we need to give actions associated with this selection. Inside of the option one, add actions. We're going to give an action of call service, 
we're going to arm the alarm. The entity ID will be our panel for alarm. In my case, this is the Alarmo panel. I'm going to give it a code. In my case, I have set a code associated with arming and disarming. Because we are inside of the arm away, we're going to select away. And because we're actually exited the building at this point in time, we can do skip delay and force it to actually go to armed. Next, we need to send a message to the phone to say that the alarm has been armed. So inside of option one, we're going to add an action. We're going to call a service. We're going to give it a title, home alarm, and our message. The alarm has been armed away. Now we need to scroll down, making sure that we're picking up on option two. This is add an option. We're going to add a condition. We're going to trigger by and we're going to select the arm home. Now, since we're going to be doing virtually exactly the same, if you wish, you can scroll up to the section where it said we've done the arming of the alarm, press the three dots. We can do copy. We can scroll back down to our section again, add trigger, paste. We can now call the service Alarmo Arm. NTID will be the Alarmo control panel. We'll enter in the code that we use to set up the Alarmo. And because this one is Alarm Home, skip the delay and force. Likewise from before, we can scroll back up and we can copy the message. We can paste the service call in, select our notification to send a message to Paul's iPhone, and then type in our message. The alarm has been armed home. Type in our title, Home Alarm. We should give it an appropriate name, press save. That's our second automation finished. For our third automation, we'll be disarming the alarm. We're doing this within a single automation. Let's create the automation. Our trigger is going to be based on a zone. We're going to base it on Paul. The zone is going to be for home. And this is going to be when we enter into the home zone. Now we need a condition that will check to see if the alarm is armed. To do this, we're going to use a condition of not. Then we're going to use a condition of or. Now we're going to check to see if the state of the alarm is set to armed away or armed, armed home. Select a state. Select your alarm. The alarm mode control panel. Select a state. Armed home. For the second condition, we're going to check for armed away. Now we need to send our actionable notification. Go down to the actions section. Call the service of send a notification via mobile to Paul's iPhone. We're going to set a message. Do you want to turn off your alarm? Give it a title, home alarm. We are going to have some data because we're going to be sending two different options to this. One to display the cameras and the second one is to disarm the alarm. As we're copying virtually the same as we did before, I've populated this already, but just to walk you through it. Actions, colon, then underneath that, we're going to underneath the T of actions, a dash, Action URI, remember, not URL. A title of view cameras, the URI, and then the dashboard with an icon afterwards. And this line should not be included for Android. The second action will be in capitals, disarm underscore alarm. The title will be disarm alarm and our icon for iPhone only, I've set to a shield. Let's save that. Press save. Now, because we are doing all of the associated actions inside of this one automation, we now need to add the remainder of the actions. Press add action. We're going to go and do wait for trigger. Put in a time limit of one minute. This is the time that the message will appear on the iPhone until it times out. Add trigger, manual event. Now, because we are going to be waiting for the trigger event, we need to give the event that we used previously. Now add the action that we'll be expecting to return. This will match the action that should be returned that we defined in the send notification. Assuming this has been successful, we now need to add the actions when the alarm will be disarmed. Add actions. Call service. The service we're going to be calling is the Alarmo Disarm. Select your panel ID. Enter in your code. Now we can send a message back to the person to say the alarm has been disarmed. Add action. Call service. Send your message. The alarm has been disarmed. Give it a title. Now press save. Now let's test it out. I created an Alarmo single panel. 
which shows the alarm status at this point in time. Now let's simulate us coming back to the property to make sure that we can disarm it. If I run this script, I select disarm. You'll see the alarm has disarmed immediately. There is no wait time on this. Now the final bonus automation is disarming when we arrive home based on geofencing location. We could just copy the disarming one and modify accordingly. Let's build it from scratch though. We create a new automation, add a trigger. We're going to base this on a zone. We're going to base it on a person entity, in this case myself, and give it a zone. My zone is home. We want to check to see if the alarm is already disarmed. Add a condition. We're going to use a not, add a condition. We're going to check a state. We're going to check on the Alarmo control panel. Check the state is not disarmed. We do an action. We're going to call the service of Alarmo disarm. Pick our panel, enter our code. Next, we just want to send a message back to the mobile phone to say that the alarm has been disarmed. Send a notification back to the device. The alarm has been disarmed. Give it a title, press save, and give it a name. Actionable notification, disarm based on zone. Press save. Now we have all our actionable notification automations in place. Just remember, this bonus one that we added here, this will automatically turn off the alarm based on entry into the zone. It will negate the automation that sends the actionable notification to whether you want to disarm it. You should choose either of these two. In my case, I want it to disarm automatically. Therefore, I can disable this one and I can have it automatically disarming itself when I enter into the home zone. So there you have it, an actionable notification triggered by you leaving your home zone that asked you if you want to view security cameras or set one of two different arm states. Then on arrival at your home zone, check to see if your alarm is actually armed and asks you if you want to disarm them with a bonus automation that simply disarms your alarm based on your arrival at your home zone. The important takeaway here is to understand the capabilities and that you tailor the actionable notifications to your specific user cases. For all you Android users, hopefully this actionable notification functionality catches up with the iPhone and they become identical for all functions. But in the meantime, be sure to check out the documentation in the links below. I hope you enjoyed that introduction to actionable notifications and that you hit that like button and subscribe if you're not already done so. Don't forget to ding that bell as we dive deeper into Home Assistant and how we can improve our homes, assuming your significant other lets you. See you on the next one.